All right. Thanks for tuning into the Prime Sports Horse Report as we preview two stakes races from Keeneland, including the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. Don't forget to visit thesheets.com to use the best thoroughbred racing tool in the industry. Good evening, John. Good evening, Greg. How are you? I'm doing good. So we were going over yesterday. Of course, uh, if you haven't already been following us the last couple of weeks, we have our our short reports on Thursday evenings, and that gives uh, everybody an opportunity to you know, get a little bit of a preview of what we're going to talk about on the show today. And we'll, we'll always give out our main race. Sometimes we'll let you know what the other race will be, but we weren't really sure. I thought it could have been race five, but we thought that there were a couple other contenders and we decided to go with race six. That's the Shackertown, a grade two race. That's the one where they have like 14 horses, right? Yeah, that's gonna. That's a race that certainly offers value. Problem with the fifth race was, you know, Garana, the even money yeah. favorite, four for five lifetime, the most likely winner in the race. And there are other horses like uh, the three Sally's Curlin and the seven Mia Mischief that could certainly get in. But there's no real value in that race, so we opted for the full field of 14 in the sixth race, and I think we made the right choice. Yeah, what's interesting is you have uh, that three, Sally's Curlin, who's coming off a five, uh, which is the best race that Sally Curlin's ever raced. And it's a lot, and it's interesting because it was also the first time that the horse ran a seven furlong race, and it was in March. So that's long enough time to not have to worry too much about the bounce. But what's interesting is, and even though this isn't a race, I do want to ask you because this is a good example. Bell's the one, ran a four, clearly an all-time best, ran it May 30th. That puts Bell's the one right at that six-week mark that you talked about that you were concerned whether or not a horse could bounce. So what do you do in a situation like that? Well, the, the, the horse has 12 career starts. And, you know, it took till race number 12 to finally run that four. Take nothing away from the horse. She's certainly fine. You know, but it's, it is one four. She does have a seven last year at Keelan, which is certainly good also. You know, the problem is... There was really no real foundation. So, but, so if you if if you're gonna when you're on the fence like that, you want to have a foundation. The, I want the odds. It depends on the odds. Yeah, the whole, is, yeah the morning line odds. is six to one. Okay. Yeah, I, I need a little longer than that. I think Curlin's uh, Sally's Curlin is probably better. First of all, Sally's Curlin is ten to one. That's true. And, and and that race was about what three months ago, something like that, right? Yeah. March. Well, they were all. They all have time off because of the pandemic when they closed all the damn racetracks, you know. So the question is, were these horses in training? Were they sent to the farm? You know, if they stay at the track, it costs the owners $100 a day. And if they're not running and don't know when they're running, a lot of guys just turned their horses out and gave them time off. You know, so that's that's the hard part of, of when they reopen, who's going to be ready to run and who's going to need a race or two. You know, so you got to get a feel for it, kind of, you know. And again, there's nothing wrong with the favorites there. Garana and Mia Mischief both have to be respected. And, you know, it's a great race to watch. It really is. All right. Also, we will not do the eighth race. That is the grade one Jenny Wiley. But what we are going to do is race six. That's a five and a half furlong turf race, the Shackertown. And that's a grade two. So that'll go off a little bit before four uh, Eastern time. And it's and you know I was thinking uh, we don't usually do Keeneland and I guess it's because as you said yesterday uh, their meet is what like five five days old. This week this meet is only this year it's only going to be five days. Usually they have a meet of a couple of weeks. Yeah, this is only a five day meet. It's usually run much earlier in the uh, much earlier in the year. It's run before the uh, Kentucky Derby's run because that race that they have tomorrow is usually a race, you know, the last race to get points for the Derby before the Derby. It's run like two weeks before the Derby. So it's run sometime in April is when Keelan usually has this meet. Uh, the, so, uh, that's because of the, and they have the bluegrass, which is that right. last Kentucky Derby prep race. Exactly. All right. Well, we're going to share thing is messed up. Yeah, but, that's true. So, uh, all right. So let's, uh, Look, a lot of horses to go with here. Let's uh, start with the favorite, the two favorites first. Jack Wildman 
or Wild Man Jack, a five to two shot. And then you have the other favorite is also five to two, bound for nowhere. So let's try to, of course, we want to find ways to not bet both of them if we can. If we have to take one, do an exacta, then that's what we have to do. Taking a look at both horses, you have, uh, let's see, Ward, of course, is the uh, the top trainer there on bound for nowhere. And you have uh, Mike Smith, the top writer, even though Garcia is also on board for bound for nowhere. But uh, looking at the sheets, Wild Man Jack uh, last year, from August through December, had a nice sheet run of 10 through 7. And then this year, 10 to 6, back-to-back sixes coming into this race. So that's really solid, whereas Bound for Nowhere uh, has run only 8s and 7s. And interesting about Bound for Nowhere, though, uh, this horse has raced in this race the last two years, finishing first in 2018 and finishing second by a neck last year yeah but he only had two races last year so that's certainly a negative sign he's getting older and he's doing less racing that's not good and at a short price i certainly would try to beat this horse i mean yeah I'm jack more, the wild man jack's a better horse right i'm definitely more concerned with wild man jack than i am with bound for nowhere but again uh, uh wesley ward is having quite a meet yep. uh I think he's got five or six wins at the meet and just uh, a three day old meet. So, you know, you got to obviously he has his all his horses primed and ready to run. I had a different idea in this race. And, uh, you know, I always. Oh, we're not going to win. We're not going with the favorites. We don't like to do that, but. (laughs) So that's sacrilegious. I mean, but sometimes you got to take what they give you. Sure. Oh, but not, but not in a fourteen horse race. Are we? We're not going with the favorites in a fourteen horse race. If that was the case, we would have, we would have went with race five or race uh, eight. Exactly. So, who do you like here, Mister Greg? Uh, let's see. Let me run through here. The horses I was interested in. There were three of them. I circled. I circled Texas Wedge, the six to one shot. Uh, he ran a six. That was an all time best in May. Uh, but then he had that 10, which was a bounce. Uh, so I'm, I'm willing to forgive him. He comes back here in this one. Uh, then the 10 total, uh, totally boss is a eight to one shot. I like the way totally boss ran last year. Excellent sheet line, 12, nine, eight, seven, six. Then the last race was the breeders cup race. We always talk about throwing that away. I was a little bit concerned, obviously with the first race this year. So I'll let you tell me a little bit about whether I should be, uh, and then the 13, uh, whatever the name of that horse is, Leanster, a 12 to 1 shot. I also, similar situation as Totally Boss. I like the fact that he goes from 10, then three straight sixes, but then the last race, another Breeders' Cup race, doesn't do well, and then a slow start with an 11 this year. So both the 10 and the 13 have very similar ways that they raced last year, but ended weak in the Breeders' Cup race and then started slow in their first race of the season. Well, let's review your horse as you discussed. Okay. Texas Wedge certainly has to be considered. He ran a 6-2 starts back. Then with no time off, he bounced last time out. Yes. So now he certainly has a shot to make a forward move. Yes. And he's 9-1. to one. So he was certainly a horse I was interested in. Total Boss, Totally Boss, by the way, is trained by the same guy who trains a 13 horse, oh. George John. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even realize yeah. that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you, again, the problem with Totally Boss is the 12 that he ran last year. You see, that was a the bad The first start. 12, you mean? Yeah, the first 12 before this coming back okay. this year. But he, he did have an excuse. He had some trouble in that race. And, obviously, he could make a forward move. The third horse you mentioned, Lean Star, is the horse which I like best in the race. Okay. This, was, this is my top selection in here. Great. And, of course, it's only because of the... Really, because of the price. 12 to 1 right now. At 12 to 1. He's run at Keeland on this turf course twice, and he has a win in his second. So that's certainly plus a positive. His last race was his first race back off of a layoff, so he certainly needed that race. Okay. And if you go back, the way you read it is the right way to read it. Those three sixes last year, very strong. One at Saratoga, one at uh, Kentucky Downs, and one at Keeland. So, you know, if he's ever making another forward move, it's going to be tomorrow. And I think he's going to be every bit of 15 to 1. And I think he's certainly worth a win in place, you know, bet at the price. But first of all, a few things people have to keep in mind. If it happens to rain and the race comes off the grass, 
everything we're telling you now about this race, you can forget about because all these selections we're making are for the turf in this race. So if the race comes off the turf, we have no bet in this race. What kind of rain does it take? To oh, it's probably going to take a lot of rain because they only open for five days, so they don't care. <laughs> yeah, right. Turf course, you know, the only thing would be uh, for safety purposes yep. if it was bad. Okay. Because today in New York it rained very bad, and they were forced to take all the races off the grass. So yeah, but they've got know. that uh, storm coming, don't they? That tropical yeah, storm. That's the uh, yeah, yeah exactly. depression or whatever the heck it is. Uh, the other yeah. thing with Leinster is, like you mentioned, not only, not only is he two for two in the money at Keeneland, going from a nine to a six, which is good, but also five out of six at this distance in the money. Yeah, that's even stronger. Listen, he, he doesn't have an impressive win record. He's only three for 20 lifetime. Yeah. However, if you look at this race, I could look at him as one for two with a second because those are the only two races he has at Keel. And, and, he, and he is 13 out of 20 in the money, which right. is not and bad for a 12 to 1 shot. Adam is he's, he's 12 to 1 and hopefully will go up to 15 to 1 because, again, it's a full field of 14. People are going to have plenty of options. They have a lot of high profile trainers here. You have Esmussen, you have Wesley Ward, you have, you know, guys, a Peter Miller. Uh, yep. Yeah, trainers that people gravitate towards, Mike Maker. So, uh, you know, hopefully Lean Star gets a little forgotten about and uh, we'll get a price. So, That's the uh, so we're, are we looking at the two and the 13? Yeah, well, I'm looking at making a winning place, but on the 13. Okay. You know, it's two, six to five. What am I going to do with him? Well, the two and the 13 exact are probably still going to end up paying. What do you think? In a 14 horse field, yeah, that'll pay $30. That's yeah, not one. bad. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. That's All right. So that is, uh, again, that's race six at Keeneland. Now we go to the main course. That is the mile and an eighth Toyota Bluegrass. And I and I can't say the Bluegrass Stakes without saying Toyota Bluegrass because they have been synonymous for quite a long time. And, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, Toyota, that's probably one of their better sponsorships um, you know, the best sport, get, I'm going to ask you this question and I know you're not going to know the answer. All right. Okay. The best sports, the, the, the most valued sports sponsorship in the business in, in, in all the sports right now over the last, I don't know, five or six years. What do you think that is? No, and I'm just, well. I'm not saying it's like statistically measured that way. I'm just saying, in my opinion. Oh, okay. Well, well, I don't know. In my opinion, it is valued quite a bit in the industry, John. Go ahead. Tell me. It's, the, it's FedEx. It's the FedEx oh. Cup. Really? Yeah, because if you think about it. Much racing, do they? If you think, no, that's why I said sports. <laughs> uh, that's why, that's why, so if you think about it, Fe, and they say the FedEx Cup playoffs, like, I don't, I mean, hundreds of times a week on the Golf Channel. On any time the network covers golf, they're constantly showing the FedEx Cup playoff races. I mean, that's that's really good bang for your buck when you get a name representing something in the sports yeah. industry. Uh, well, where, yeah, whereas yeah, Toyota Bluegrass, it's once a year. Right. You have the Toyota Bluegrass right here. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. There is, a, and again, I really like this race because you have 13 horses and this is another race kind of like the one we just did. And maybe even better. I don't think that there's, you know, a, 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 a shoe in as far as a favorite. I mean, Swiss Skydivers, the three to one shot is a good horse, but, you know, his best is a six. So I think this is another good money race, John. It certainly is. There's certainly some value here and a lot of ways to go. Uh, Swiss, Swiss Skydiver, nothing wrong with this horse except for a few facts. First of all, it's a girl running against boys, ah. so that, that's a little disadvantage right there. She does get weight from the rest of the field because she is a female running against males. But at this time of year, it's not so easy for girls to beat the boys. Why? They need, because they're still developing. You know, after September, like that, September, October, that's when boy, girls, in my opinion— are on par with the boys. Okay. They're still growing. I mean, these are three-year-olds. These are still like young horses. You know, That's they right. just turned three. So uh, they turned three six months ago. So they're still in a developing situation. So they're testing this girl against the boys, I guess. Uh, that's what they're doing. I guess they want to try to get points. I don't know. Okay. But uh, that's so, so does that mean that if this was a Kentucky Derby prep race, this horse would not be in this race? 
Well, this is a Kentucky Derby uh, because I believe they're giving points out here. So if they're giving points, yeah, they're giving points out here. Okay. There's 100 points to be given out. So. If it it is still unusual, though, isn't it? Because this would you like this horse would have been better off in if this was the three weeks or four or a month before the Derby, they would be getting ready for the Kentucky Oaks, wouldn't they? Exactly. This was if this was normal circumstances, I I sincerely doubt this horse yeah. would be in the race. All right, so that's very interesting. Then you have the other favorite or the second choice, which would be the five uh, Rushi and the and the three Art Collector. And out of those two horses, Art Collector's got three straight sevens, and Rushi's got a better a better line, uh, but the best number is a nine last time out. Well, Rushi's line, you're right, is nice. It's forward moving, but guess what? He's yet to run the seven. That's right. Uh, uh, and he's five to yeah, one. Yeah, five to one, yeah. Art Collector has two sevens in a row, the last one being around two turns. So that's a plus. Okay. This race is around two turns, but so was so was Rushy's last race around two turns. But Rushy, our collector looks better to me than Rushy. If you look at our collector's whole career, last year he started off with three straight grass races. That was a bad idea yeah. because obviously he's better on the dirt. They ran him on the dirt. He didn't run well. Then he ran a big race at Churchill, but he was disqualified that day because he was uh, he tested positive. For drugs, so that's not good. Then he had a trainer change. Yeah, then they said, "The heck with you. We're giving this horse to someone else. And they gave him to this guy, and uh, this guy did real well with him. He got two sevens out of him, and, uh, you know. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Yeah. Races, forget the grass races as a two-year-old. They mean nothing. So this is really what you see here are two sevens, and, and it's strong because the last race was a seven minus. He had every right to bounce off of the first seven that he ran two races back without much time and he didn't so to me that's strong you know listen if you really get five to one or anywhere near five to one this is on my opinion the right horse to bet all right now the one shivery what i like about shivery is if you really look at it uh since the beginning of his career he has done a, a pretty nice job moving forward uh especially over the last four races 14 13 11 8 so is perfectly going in the right direction. And if he continues on this uh, trajectory and he runs, say, a six in this race, it may be enough. Yeah, but, you know. He and he's eight to, to make, one. Yeah, but he has 11 races. So it's kind of a lot of the Yeah, it is. Yeah, for a three-year-old. Yeah. Without making a backward move. I would say a backward move is due sooner or later. I mean, it doesn't have to come tomorrow. He could still suck up a piece. You know, he's fine. What about uh, Finnick? The Fierce. Yeah, Finnick the Fierce uh, has uh, the last three races. He's gone from a 17 to an 11 to a 10. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, isn't he similar to the one? And he's a little bit of a longer price. I don't know. Yeah, the only difference is, yeah, the only difference is, is the eight versus the 10. Yeah. Right, but you're getting, uh, you're being compensated at the windows for that. So. Yeah, I mean, because you can take a look at, at say, the five, Man in the Can. Now, Man in the Can has gone. Now, here, here's an interesting thing if we want to be silly. You have uh, this year four uh, this races. Year, four you four got races. the 215s. Then he goes to two nines. So now maybe he's ready for, I don't know, maybe two sevens. So would, if that happens, would, then a seven might get him in the money. Well, if I was looking to make a case for this horse, I would read it different than you're reading. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm doing the silly way of no, reading no, it. No, I'm just going to tell you, but you're not being silly. I mean, you said two fifteens and two nines. That's yeah. all true. Yeah. But the two nines, guess what? The two nines were both long distance races around two turns. Okay. So maybe he got better with distance. Okay. So, you know, this is not a, an impossible horse either to make a forward move and possibly run the seven off of it. But uh, what about uh, Basin, the eight to one shot, the eight horse who ran a 15, a 14 and a 10? Interesting, because last year, 12, nine, eight, then doesn't race until March of this year, starts with a 15 down to 14, down to 10. So what about yeah. an all time best seven for Basin tomorrow? Well, I can read this two ways, and again, depending on price, the good news about this horse is that he ran fast as a two-year-old. He ran an eight and a nine. The bad news is that we haven't yes. seen those numbers yet as a three-year-old. However, that being said, his first two races back this year will both run on wet tracks, so that could have been the reason that he didn't run well. But that being said, 
he has an eight as a two year old on a wet track. So, but every wet track is different. You know, uh, well, he has a nine he, on, a, he has a nine on at Saratoga at, uh, on a dirt track, you know, fast track. The only negative I have on this horse is that he has yet to come back to those races that he ran as a two year old. When you run a nine and an eight as a two year old last year in Saratoga, this horse had the, a license to come out and run fives, you know, because you have development, a certain amount of development. As you get older, your bones get stronger, you get bigger, you get, it's like an athlete. It's okay. like anyone else. All right, well, you know. well, well, let's go with a nice long shot then. Attachment rate, the 20 to 1 shot. Here you have a horse who this year uh, has, uh, just let's take a look at the last three races, 12, 8, 8. And that's 20 to 1. I use this horse in my hookups. I use the three horse on top here, our collective. I use the one, Shivery. I used uh, the nine also underneath, and uh, probably I'll use the five man in the can. Three with one, five, nine. It's probably the way to go. Listen, take nothing away from the filly. She could get in, but she's going to be the favorite. You know, she's got a strong line. She ran an eight, a six, bounced to the nine, certainly could make a forward move. You know, but again, I think the right way to go is to key the three. Nothing wrong with king the nine at a big price. You know, you got to shop for value. It's a good race. I would avoid the favorites. Favorite could win. But, you know, he's far. When you were betting a favor, you want them to be foolproof. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. And I, and I, and I, and I, yeah, I, that attachment rate at 20 to 1 to me is, is, is a definite must. It's to throw into the, to throw into your, yeah. into your ticket. Absolutely belongs on your tries, your supers, even in the, you know, for sure. You, you must use that horse. No question about it. I'm, I'm going to go ahead. My, my pick is, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'm probably going to use the one just like you. You have the one in there. I'm going to use the one. And um, uh, you know what? Yeah, you, you've got well, – you have the three as your top horse art collector, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes the most sense too. Okay. I'll, I'll use the one and the and the five because we talked about both of those uh, pretty strongly. Yeah. Uh, we're on the same page with both races. I don't know if that's good or bad. We usually are. <laughs> and uh, and again, what did we do with the first race? So we went with uh, the betting the star, the third lead star. Yes. Yeah, line I bet that was in place. That that's what I like. Now, uh, quickly, next week we have the opening of Saratoga, John. We have a crazy week next week, Greg. Yeah, you're not going to know where to go. You have Sa Saratoga opens Thursday, so we have Thursday night. We'll give you a. Uh, um, a preview of what races we'll be doing. I'm sure the Delmar will have. State oh, races. Ne next next week's the Haskell. Okay, next week's the Haskell too. Yeah, so you've got well, really early. Yeah, you got Saratoga, Delmar, Monmouth Park, and yeah, those are the those are the three uh, race tracks we're going to be talking about next week. But Monmouth Park is the is the big day. It's probably the biggest day of the year for them, right? It by far is the biggest day of the year. That's correct. All right. So we'll be talking about that. Also, don't forget, I think if I'm looking at my screen, I believe it's this way where I'm pointing. I know you can't see, John. That's where you subscribe to our YouTube channel. John, appreciate it as always. Listen, please announce that because people have emailed me wanting to know when the show will be up and things like that. Yeah, if you and subscribe to the channel, then you'll be able to find out when these uh, shows are posted and you don't have to wait for us to tweet it out or, or guess when they're available. And it's nothing to subscribe also. Correct. It's free, it's free, yeah. free, and free. Free is always good, Greg. Yes, it is. Just, right. like, the, just like your picks every Friday. <laughs> Stay safe, be well, and uh, I'll talk to you during the week. Sounds good.